Hi everyone, welcome to the Vernier Workshop Biology of Membranes. We'll be getting started soon. We'll just give um, attendees a chance to log in uh, to Zoom. Um, a couple of things as we're getting started. Um, you'll be taken great care of by Colleen McDaniel and John Melville today. They'll be uh, your main presenters from our techno technical support biology department. Um, but I wanted to share with everybody that um, I'll be putting a link to the handouts that will be um, used in today's workshop in the chat um, feature on uh, Zoom. So you can uh, access those through that link. Um, we're asking that you use the Q&A feature to ask any questions during the presentation. We'll be answering those along the way and during the presentation. And if we happen to not get uh, to your question, by the end of the session today, we'll follow up with you later. I also wanted to let everybody know that this recording will be available on our website in our video training library after today, so you can access the recording at any time. And that we'll also be providing all of the attendees a certificate of attendance for attending this webinar. So I would like to pass it on to your presenters. Hi, I'm John Melville from Veneer Software and Technology. Um, I'm the director of the biology department, and I have Colleen here with us as well, who is one of our biology specialists, uh, environmental scientist specialist, so we can answer probably all of your questions related to this uh, activity, and both of us have done the labs that I'm going to be showing you um, today. What I'm going to be focusing on in this webinar are I'm going to be showing you three veneer activities um, very quickly. One is going to be um, Diffusion, just showing you how to demonstrate diffusion. The other one is going to be um, our biology of membranes activity, because that's just a really great activity that anybody could do. You could even have students do it at home. <clears throat> and then I'll just be talking a little bit about osmosis and then going through how to use our remote um, sample data library and then other options for remote teaching. What I'm going to do mostly is I'm going to be sharing my screen and I'm going to be turning off this view so that you can actually see my setup. I have like a little lab bench off to the right of me that you, you'll be able to see. So I'm going to share my screen and then move over to that lab bench. And then you'll be seeing a point of view of the experiment that I'm going to do. As Angie described, um, the experiments that we're going to be doing today, let me share my screen and I'll show you those as well. Great, so right now you should be seeing my screen. I'm looking up a little bit. And then I'm also gonna be taking you through these different options. I'm just gonna be talking about uh, flipped teaching examples. I'll take you through the GA4 sample data library. We'll talk about data sharing with Logger Pro and GA4. I'll talk to you a little bit about Graphical Analysis Pro, and then I'll talk about these other options here. These are paid for options, and all these other ones here um, are free. The top three are free, the bottom four are paid for options. All right. So if you're teaching remotely, which I think is really challenging, I mean, everybody's gone to emergency remote teaching, we have a lot of resources. One of the resources that we've created is the remote, um, GA4 sample data library, and this is live on the website. So let me show you how to get to that on the website. If you were just to go to Vernier.com, the first thing that comes up is the Explore Remote Solutions. And if you tap there, it's going to take you to a place where you can see all of our remote teaching solutions. And I'm just going to tap on high school really quick. And in this case, you can see we have a free webinar. <clears throat> and then these are the resources. There's Pivot Interactives, which I'll talk about later. For physics, there's Vernier Video Analysis. But what I want to focus on most is this free library. So what this is, is this is an experiment data and sample data library. So we went through and we did all, lots of the experiments in biology with Vernier. 
chemistry with Vernier, physics with Vernier, and the other books. And we have all of the data located in this library so that you could actually demonstrate this experiment or demonstrate an experiment. And then you could give the data to your students. So if you browse that library, if you tap on browse, you will see the first thing that comes up nicely is the biology experiments. And we have experiments from biology with Vernier, advanced biology with Vernier, and then human physiology experiments. So all that I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be focusing on uh, two experiments, diffusion through membranes, and um, these two experiments, effective alcohol membranes and biological membranes. So for example, if you were to tap on diffusion through membranes, <clears throat> it's gonna take you to this resource, and this is publicly available. Anybody can get to this, where you have the instructions, and then located over here is the, the data file, the actual sample data. Um, and this is free for you to give to your students. So what I was gonna do is I'm just gonna back up here a little bit and talk about one of the ways that I would approach teaching and then we'll go back and use the sample data library, if that's all right. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my video feed and I'm gonna be focusing on the, the screen viewer up above where you can see, right now you can see my lab set up right here and then graphical analysis as well. So let me do that, I'm gonna turn off the video and we'll move over there. So if you're teaching remotely right now, one of, that can be really difficult to keep the students and people engaged. So one of the things that I think is really unique is you could actually use a video feed and show students the actual experiment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how I would actually demonstrate to students how to do the diffusion activity and then they could analyze the data. So what I have right here is a, um, conductivity probe. I'm going to be using that conductivity probe. I'm just going to tap and turn it on. When it's flashing red, that means it's broadcasting. Now the GoDirect probes are called GoDirect because they are both wireless, but they also have a USB cable on or USB port on the bottom. So they can be plugged into um, pretty much anything. What I then have next that I'm going to show you is I actually have, oops. <clears throat> you can see here, this is a piece of dialysis tubing. And I'm going to fill it with a salt solution. So in this case, you could actually show your students the experiment. And if you've never used the uh, dialysis clamps before, they are great. So I'm just going to clamp this in here. And I'm going to, so this is a piece of dialysis tubing. I've got a 10% uh, salt solution in here. I'm going to rinse this off. So there, I've prepped that. And then now I'm going to switch cameras. <clears throat> and all that I'm really using here are really affordable USB cameras. And I'm using software called IPEVO, um, which is basically free. And it's a great camera uh, app that can be run in Chrome, Mac, or Apple. And I'm going to put this dialysis tubing right here in this solution of water. I'm just going to let that diffuse a little bit for 30 seconds. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to connect the GoDirect conductivity probe. <clears throat> so now you can see, or students can see, this is the actual experiment that we're going to do. And then I'm going to bring up graphical analysis. I'm going to say new experiment. I'm going to select sensor data collection. And I'm going to connect 
to the conductivity probe. And if you were to read the instructions for this lab activity, it actually has them change the mode and time. We actually change this to 120 seconds and the rate to 0 0.1. And then now I'm just going to put these two next to each other. And then I'm just going to hit the collect button and we're going to watch what happens over about two minutes. There's my data. There we go. So one of the things, uh, tricks as a biology teacher that I've learned um, teaching a lot of these workshops is that um, it's really nice to use that zoom button because that'll zoom into the data and then it'll auto scale, auto scale as the experiment is being done. So we're just looking at the um, salt solution diffuse out from that dialysis tubing and being picked up by the conductivity probe. And it went down. There we go. So this is most likely that movement artifact of me shaking it. We'll let it run here. <clears throat> there we go. That's nice. So you can see down here it's beginning to diffuse. Let me go up. There we go. If you wanted to, I could even collect another run and just let it keep going for another two minutes. One of the reasons why I really like this lab is you can compare um, different uh, concentrations of solutions. So you could look at uh, how diffusion changes with increasing concentration. You can also look at the difference between different types of ions. So like ammonium chloride, sodium chloride, etc. And diffusion is actually a pretty important concept. So being able to discuss it and show it in real time is uh, important. There we go. So once again, I'm just gonna let this run for um, two minutes. And once again, the reason why I'm doing this is just so you can show your students the experiment. And then if you want, you can go to the sample data and actually tell the students, or you could give this data, share it with them, or you could go to the sample data that we provided and give it to them to actually analyze. So there we go, that's increasing nicely. Let's give it a few more seconds and then we'll analyze the rate of diffusion. Are there any questions, Colleen? No, there are not. Doing good. All right, so I'm gonna auto scale this.
And this experiment is provided in that folder that Angie talked about. So in that folder, there is this experiment in biology with Premier that looks at diffusion. So if I wanted to analyze the rate of diffusion, I could select this region and I could say apply curve fit. And there we have the slope. And then I could compare uh, di the diffusion of different um, solutions. The other lab that's in here as well that we've offered, I'm gonna um, don't save this, is a lab called Biology of Membranes. And that lab is really neat. I just wanna explain it to you a little bit. So in, in the lab Biology of Membranes, this is something that your students could even do on their own. Because <clears throat> all that you need is a beat. So this is a beat. And then what you do is you cut the beat into little pieces. And then you place the beat, the beat pieces into, in our case, we recommend using these well plates. But you could use Dixie cups or something like that if you wanted to. And what you do is you can then look at the effect of different alcohols or the effect of different salt solutions. And this is a great, a really great inquiry activity as well for those of you teaching AP or if you're a college instructor and want to do um, inquiry level experiments, because students can very simply do, um, make this an inquiry activity by looking at detergents or how other things disrupt membranes. So in this case, what I did is I just looked at the effect of increasing alcohol concentration. So these are little pieces of beet. You put the alcohol into each well. And so there's an increasing concentration going this way. The whole lab just takes like 10 minutes. You just put an equal, uh, uh, equal surface area or a little piece of beet in each one. And then after 10 minutes, you can see this, that the water here had the least amount of disruption and the stronger the alcohol content, the greater the disruption. And if you wanted to look at salts or other things, you could do that as well. So here's just another experiment that I did. And this experiment works great because all that I'm using in this case is a light tray. So this is just a light tray that I think was oh, $15. That's a USB powered. Um, so once again, you as an instructor, you could do this experiment or show the results to your students and you can clearly see an effect here. Uh, now you could, if you wanted to as well, you could do this entire experiment and you could actually make it quantitative by using one of our colorimeters and the instructions for doing that are provided in the, um, the lab that we've provided for you. So any questions on that? It's like a super simple lab. You just cut the beet into little pieces. You put it into a well plate and then you just add a given concentration of salt or water to each one. And then you see what happens over 10 minutes, slightly stir it, and then you can actually measure the absorbance as well. The um, camera that I'm using in this case, the overhead camera is um, from IPEVO as well. It's a super nice, just little overhead camera, but you could do the same thing with your iPhone and use, um, or other phone and use some type of uh, sharing like air server or something like that. Colleen, did you have a question? I was just gonna say there are no questions right now. Okay. So if you're teaching remotely and you've done an experiment like this, you've shown it, you're trying to get your students engaged, how do you move on to the next step, which is how would you actually show or share your data? So what I want to do is show you how to do that next. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this away and I'm going to launch graphical analysis. Bring that into view. Now I'm using GA Pro and I'll show you how that works in a minute. But 
the sample data library that we have, what you could do with your students is you can easily just go over and say choose file. And then for biology with membranes, I actually have this right here is the effect of alcohol on membranes. So this is that data that we've provided in the sample data library. And if I select open, you will see that we've provided the data here. So there's data for methanol, ethanol, and one propanol. And I'm going to connect these dots. So I'm just gonna go to edit graph options. There we go. Oh, and also as well, you can see right here, I'm gonna put on the graph legend. So you can see right here in this experiment, in this case, methanol did not produce a large change in concentrate in, um, it did not disrupt the beet membranes very well, or it did, but not as well as ethanol. Ethanol disrupted it much more, whereas one propanol, which is much bigger, disrupted it a lot more. So once again, you could take that same uh, data that I showed you, you could actually show the students a, a visual representation of this data and then give them this data to analyze. And we have other ex examples here. So I could say don't save. And we actually also have uh, biological membranes, which is the, another uh, lab in biology with Vernier. This is the sample data from that lab as well. We have salt, which is um, osmotic stress. You can also look at detergent and you can also look at pH. So I'm gonna go over here and actually say, turn on the graph. And so here's the effect of salt. You can see that salt has a major effect after you're at 12%. But I could also take a look at, what about detergent? And you would need to remove this little title up here. I can show you how to do that. But you could see the detergent as a major effect. And this is, I think in this case, all we used was, was SDS, but you could use shampoo or students could use shampoo. And you can see that as the detergent or SDS concentration increases, you wind up disrupting more membranes. Or if you look at the effect of pH, you can see what you might expect, which is that um, acids disrupt the membrane the most Whereas things that are basic also disrupt the membrane, but things that are neutral do not disrupt the membrane as much. And that's why I really like this activity for inquiry, because once again, if we go back, um, if I were to show you the video of that really quick, this is a super simple experiment that your students could do. Like I said, you wouldn't even need to use uh, this micro well titer plate. You could use Dixie cups. They could just cut out a little piece of beet, which they can easily get at the grocery store. And they could look at the effect of pH um, or the effect like vinegar has a low pH. They could look at the effect of that versus water or other things. So there are ways to make this interactive and engaging for students. John, we have a question. What's the question? Do you have a video of this experiment that I can share with my students? I do not have a video of this experiment, but that is a great segue because you could easily create a video and insert it and share. So let me give you um, an example. So what I'm actually using up here is called GA Pro. And in GA Pro, we have built in some experiments. So for example, if I say see experiments, there are all of these experiments that live in GA Pro. And let's take a look at, where's aerobic respiration? So I like that one. <clears throat> or actually, let's take a look at monitoring EKG. And what's nice is that you can actually insert a video and actually have it play back. So I'm gonna enable replay here and I'm just gonna hit start replay. And you can see this is my friend Walter putting on some EK, EKG electrodes.
So that black little button there was the collect button, and there you can see the EKG traces. Now, I just use this as an example because you yourself, if you just said file, new experiment, and you're using GA Pro, there's an option over here for video. So you can actually now using GA Pro, you can actually import, import your own videos. You can use playback. So you can use this as a tool to create your own uh, files for students to analyze. Um, GA Pro has just been released, so we haven't been able to get this specific experiment in there yet. But that's one of the things that we've thought of. And if you think that it would be a really great thing to do, we can work on that for sure. Other questions? What is the price of GA Pro? I think the price of GA Pro, let's go see. The price of GA Pro, it's a subscription. It's $69 for the first year. And once again, this is in that remote teaching resources. I have put in the GA4 sample data library so that you can easily get to. Um, and then Graphical Analysis Pro, which you can easily launch off into and you can see how that works. Now, how many of you have used uh, Logger Pro before? I assume that some of you are, have used it before or have used Logger Pro. Um, our Inquiry Biology book, when I published the Inquiry Biology book, we have a lot of great data sets. And those data sets live in Logger Pro. So this is Logger Pro here. Well, they don't live in Logger Pro, but they are Logger Pro files. And also, if you look in that sample data library, we have Logger Pro files from uh, Advanced Biology with Vernier. I wanted to show you just a nice little trick that a lot of people don't know about, which is how you can take a Logger Pro file and get it into GA, graphical analysis. So since I am on the same network, um, GA and Logger Pro, these are both on my computer, I can use a special thing called data sharing. So if I say file new experiment, there is this option right here called data sharing. And if I select data sharing, it will show me the discovered devices and it can see my MacBook. And if I tap on Super's MacBook, there the data that was living in Logger Pro comes straight across over to GA. So if you are a customer that's been using Logger Pro for a long time and you have students that are on iOS devices, Android devices, um, you're, you're using other options like Chromebooks that cannot use Logger Pro, you can create data files for students um, so that they can analyze them. So you could then create this data file, you could then save it and push it out to students. Other questions? No other questions currently. All right, so. <clears throat> so then let's take a look at these other remote teaching resources that are available. So we've talked about the sample data library. We've talked about ways that you could uh, flip your classroom just to make it engaging, to show students how to do the experiment. I've shown you the GA4 sample data library. We've taken a little bit of a look at Graphical Analysis Pro. Um, let's take a look at Pivot Interactives. So Pivot Interactives is a really nice resource. And it actually contains lots of activities. Now these are actually videos that you can analyze. Now you can take a look at the actual library by tapping on the Pivot Interactives library. You tap on the library, it's going to show you all of the activities that are in the library. Just waiting for it to load up here. And if you go over to where it says filter by category, you can then select subject and there are 32 for biology. 
And you can see there's labs for organic macromolecules, transpiration rates. There's one for diffusion and osmosis, one for egg osmosis, properties of water, enzyme action. There's lots of different examples. So if you take a look at, say, one for diffusion and osmosis, what's really ni nice about these activities is it gives you the learning objectives up top. It gives you an introduction into how the particles move, like in, an introduction into the activity itself, shows you the actual experiment. And then in this case, there are actually things that you can do to change the experiment. You could look at glucose and distilled water, salt and distilled water, and you load up those experiments. So in here, there are at least three different experiments in this case. So are there any questions, Colleen? Yes. Uh, is the subscription a site license or per device? And I'm not sure if that's referring to Pivot or Graphical Analysis Pro. I'm well, I'll answer, I'll answer both. So Graphical Analysis Pro is just a site license for your school. It does not require what we call um, any seed activation or anything like that. So it's just you get that and it's a site license that the entire school and all the students at that school can use. Pivot is a per seat subscription. So in that case, um, a seat basically means you need to think of a seat as like a desk or a textbook. So you will need to purchase as many seats as you have students that would be in your class. Um, there is a site license option, but that is still based on a number of seats. That's 250 seats to get what we call a flex site license option. And that's really nice because then you don't have to worry about managing seats and seat activation and things like that. Um, the way that this works, I'm logged in as myself here, is once you find an activity that you want, if you take a look at the library, there's the Pivots Interactives library. Let's take a minute for it to load up. You take a look at the activity that you want to take a look at. And then what you do is you add that. You see where it says right here, add to my library. Once you are, you've subscribed to Pivot, you can add that to your library. And then now you're free to edit, change, assign it to a class, etc. So then back up here, when if I go to library, I can go to my library. And these are all the experiments that are in my personal library. And there's also a really cool way that you can actually um, create a class, assign activities. There's a lot of classroom management uh, capabilities that are built into Pivot. But the students wind up interacting predominantly with the video. They analyze the video, there's questions that they can answer, etc. So let's see, let's take a look at this preview question again here, this activity. So you can see, did the salt move? How do you know? They're, and these are all gradable as well. Any other questions on pivot? Or just other questions in general? Um, just one about where the recording of the webinar is going to be posted. I, I don't know, but I think that'll be um, up front. We can, we can send an email out to see where the webinar will actually be posted later. I'll so, actually post the link um, to where it will be in the video library. Okay, great. So now if I go back to the um, remote teaching resources that I put up here, I want to show you something else which is called 80 from 80 instruments, which is called LT. This is um, predominantly used for uh, colleges. So if you're a college instructor, it would be really useful, but it's just a different form of um, online sort of uh, remote teaching tool, but it also supports real data collection. So I'm going to log into LT.
And what it will show you is all of the different activities that are available. And we have loaded in a bunch of activities in LT that are related to biology with Vernier and advanced biology with Vernier. So like here's diffusion through membranes, here's diffusion through membranes that is complete. And what's really nice is that this activity also has sample data in it. So if you wanted to use this to teach remotely, there is sample data that you could give to students. The students would log into LT. Um, there's the instructor, instructor's manual, which you can download here. But let's go ahead and take a look at this activity. Um, kind of a lot like Pivot, what LT has is an introduction. So there's diffusion through membranes. There's a nice video that talks about what a membrane is. There's even a hyperlink that talks about diffusion through membranes. There's actually a challenge. Um, so before you get started, there might actually be questions that students would have to ask so that they can understand how diffusion would work. And then they can check their answer. Oh, nope, I got that one wrong. And it even goes through the learning objectives. So once again, there's the challenge. Now what's really nice is that lab that I showed you, that I just showed you that I actually did with the dialysis tubing, you can actually do that experiment in LT. So it's a little bit different than Pivot, which is a video that you would use. But in this case, in LT, we have this whole activity with sample data, or you could actually do the experiment live in this platform. And you could actually collect data, et cetera. Um, so that is LT. And there are several different experiments that you could use to analyze and look at. Any questions? LT is also a pay for service. No other questions. All right. And there's a really nice video that talks about LT here and all of the biology content that's there. So there's a total of 19 uh, laboratory exercises and you can actually get a preview if you want. Um, one of the nice things about Pivot is you can easily get a free instructor trial. So under here, under instructor trial. Oh, John, we have a question about LT. Yes. Is LT available through Veneer? No, LT is only available <coughs> um, through um, 80 Instruments. So you have to go to 80 Instruments to buy LT, but it is supported by our uh, probeware and we, we, they are one of our partners. And actually, if you go back to the remote teaching resources, um, here, like, I'll, let's go back to Vernier. Here we go. If you go to the um, remote resources, and in this case, tap on college, what you will find is uh, two added resources. There are partner resources. There's LT, so you tap on here to go to LT by 80 instruments. And then the last thing that I just wanted to mention briefly is there's this other thing called Lab Archives. And in Lab Archives, Lab Archives is like a, uh, a digital online textbook. And Lab Builder is a service that has lots of our experiments in it. It doesn't support um, real-time data collection like LT, but lots of our books are actually in Lab Builder. So you could actually use Lab Builder as a real notebook. Um, and that is also a subscription service. You can try it for free, but you could have students use it as a real um, or much more like a traditional laboratory notebook to do experiments, collect data, et cetera. 
So they are also an, another um, resource that you could use for online learning or remote learning. Other questions? Nope. All right, some things that I just wanted to remind everybody about is if you take a look on our website, just remember that if you go to downloads, graphical analysis four is free. Um, and so is spectral analysis. So if you go here to graphical analysis, you can get the download for Windows, download for Mac, for Google, et cetera, and the Chrome Web Store. And this is free and it works on every platform. The other thing that I wanted to show you really quick um, is I know that I've shown you how to explore these remote resources, uh, get to all of these resources that we provided. If you're already a customer though, you might have, you might not know that you have access to some resources on our website. So what I'm going to do right here is if you go to the top right hand corner on our website, and if you are registered, what it'll do is it'll pop up and it doesn't look like anything's changed, but it says my account now. And now if I go to downloads, if I go to downloads, it's thinking. what you will see is all of the installers that you have access to. So instead of having to call and ask us, hey, where's Logger Pro? How can I get LabQuest Q or how do I get X? They're already all there for you. So if you have a subscription or if you have a site license for Logger Pro, you can get it there. And we have Windows, Mac OS, the MSI installer for IT, even installers for older computers. Um, if you use LabQuest Viewer, we have access to that. We have, if you're using uh, Veneer Video Analysis or, or other subscription services, they'll be listed there. But more importantly, all of these um, experiments that we've been talking about, you can get access to all of the resources that are in the books as well. So this would include the student instructions and the teacher's instructions, which are really important. So you can see like right here, I can download the electronic resources for biology with Veneer. I actually have access to all of the books. If you were to log in here, you wouldn't have access to all of them. You would only have access to the books that you've actually purchased or that your school has. But if you're already a customer, this is an amazing resource um, to be able to get access to the books that you've already purchased and the digital content. Other questions? Nope. Oh, one. Can you explain what the different files are in the Google Drive link? Perfect. So if you go to the Google Drive link, right, so I'll go to biology membranes here. If it says DOCX at the end, that's the actual experiment. So let's just click on that. That's the actual experimental write up. This is um, in graphical analysis, experiment number eight. So this is the actual write up. Right, so actually how to do the experiment for the students. If it says AMBL on it, that is the data file. So if it says AMBL, that means this is the data file that you can use or download and open up in GA. So here I've got effective alcohol membranes, that's one lab. Here's um, biological membranes, it says .docx, that's another lab. Um, there's instructions on how to download graphical analysis for, and then this is just that Google Doc on remote teaching resources that I put together for you. I have also put in here, this is not um, normally publicly available, but if you tap on inquiry data sets, I have put some data in here that is from, or that was used for collect, uh, in our inquiry, our investigating biology with inquiry book. So this is some extra data that does not live at the remote uh, um, resources, but these are all in logger profiles. But you could then export those into GA. And then if we were to go back to biology of membranes, uh, for membrane diffusion, once again, there's the actual DOCX file, the doc file, the word file, 
and then an AMDF file. One of the nice things about these um, Word files is they're really easy to import into Google Docs now. And everything should be very close to the same. So you could import these into Google Docs and share them with your students if you wanted to as well. And you can also um, export them as PDFs. And then I also have uh, the files for, that are related to osmosis, um, both in the inquiry book and also in biology with Vernier. And then I have provided the inquiry data from our bi investigating biology through inquiry, um, looking at um, different things like the introductory activity, osmosis with sucrose and sodium chloride, and then comparing sucrose to glucose. Any other questions? No other questions. All right, then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my video and I'll stop sharing my screen. And then hopefully we'll see if you have some more questions, I can answer those. So any other questions about how to use GA4, Logger Pro, ways to do experiments? Um, I can also, I can show you the type of camera that I'm using if you want to. Um, right, this right here is a, a desktop camera from IPEVO. Um, the, the software is called IPEVO Visualizer. Um, it works really well. It'll actually work with any uh, what we call universal video class camera. So any UVC camera. So this is a little expensive. I think it's around $100. Um, but I also have been using a really affordable and cheap just little webcam. I mean, so these, these webcams are everywhere. They're all over the place. You can pick one up for, you know, 10, 15, $20. And they work great as well. And then also, if you know how to use Air Server or um, Chromecast, you can you know cast the, from the camera from your phone to show your experimental desktop or something like that if you wanted to. The last thing that I wanted to add is I I can't believe how challenging this must be for all of you. Um, both Colleen and I are former teachers. I'm a former college professor. Um, she she taught high school before. And uh, I can't imagine anything more challenging than having to rapidly change from being in the classroom, teaching with students to trying to figure out how to do all of this remotely. So I just wanted to remind you that we're here to help. If you have any questions, you can email us at biology at uh, Like I said, Vernier is for teachers by teachers and we love helping teachers. Um, so please ask us questions if you need any help get in touch. If you need resources, get in touch. If you would like us to make a video of that um, beat lab, just looking at a couple different, um, you know, uh, the effect of alcohol or, or et cetera, and putting that into GA Pro, let us know, because we can add a few more experiments into GA Pro. Um, but there, these are also super easy to do yourself. You could actually just film a little experiment with your camera or with your phone and then export that video and put it into GA Pro and show it students the actual experiment. But just get in touch. We really want to help and we'll do what we can. Someone did say that would be great, Beat Lab. Beat Lab, okay, Beat so lab. We, we can do that. That's a, um, what we call an events with entry lab, but I, I would love to do that and film that. Um, I can show you some of the other experiments that are in GA Pro. There's some pretty cool ones that are in there, like definitely for aerobic respiration, cellular respiration, I think, I think next week, uh, Colleen is actually doing what I'm doing, but for cellular respiration. Is that correct, Colleen? That is correct. We are going to yeah. play with peas and beans. And I know that we do have that video in GA Pro. So you could definitely see that as well with just CO2 or with CO2 and O2. But if there are other experiments that you would really like us to make to put into GA Pro, please let us know. I, I, I'm glad that you like the Beat Lab. It's one of my favorite ones to do, and it works really well. Other questions?
You want me to show you how to use Pivot? One of the interesting things about Pivot is um, the actual interface is kind of unique in that you actually need to interface uh, with the actual video and analyze it. And then in addition, there's, uh, there's ways that you can assign it or create a class. So if you have questions related to that, we can also answer that as well. Is there anything that you find uh, really challenging right now that you would like us to see us develop or an activity that you find really challenging or um, even an experiment that you find challenging that you're trying to figure out a way to, to teach it remotely um, with your students or any other ideas? I mean, I've, we have a lot of creative people at Vernier. So if you let us know even things that you're finding really difficult, feel free to email us at biology at and we'll get back to you right away. And Sonia says, sure, show pivot. Show pivot, okay. Let me go back to sharing my screen. I'm gonna go back to desktop two. All right, so. <clears throat> Great, so let me go to one activity that I like demonstrating pretty easily. So if I go, I'm logged in as a member of Pivot. And so I'm going to go to my classes. So let's say you've decided you want an activity and you want to put it in your class. So what I've done here is I've created these three classes, biology, biology two, human A and P, and then training. And if you were to create a new class, You then have a choice of setting it up as institution or student. Um, this is the form of payment. Student is really predominantly only used if you're going to have the students actually paying to use the resource. If um, your, your college or high school or institution has already paid, um, or then you would actually set it up as institution. You can pick the level. And then now you can see I have this course that I've set up. And then you interact with these icons over here off to the right. So if I tap here, there's manage class and roster, assign an activity. This is really important. You copy the class key and you give that to students and then they sign into Pivot and log in with that class key and then they would only see this class. So what if I want to assign an activity? Well, I can tap on assign an activity. And then these are all the activities that are actually in my library. So I can then pick what I want to use in my library. And I've got a lot of these, but I could pick any one of these that I wanted to pick. So I could pick like copy of transpiration rate and then assign it. So you can have multiple classes. Well, what about how do you interact with the video? Let me show you one of the ones that I like using. If I go to my library. <clears throat> the one that I actually really like demonstrating with is Enzyme Action. because what you can see in this case is it gives you a nice introduction into how to use the video. And then in this case, there's the tool icon up here. And then there is a scale. And then pH. And then down here is how you actually interact with the video. So if you look down here, They've done this enzyme action experiment at zero to three degrees, 21 to 23, 35 and 75 degrees, and at several different pHs. And you would then pick which one you want to load. Right now I'm at 35 degrees with that pH number B. I can load that up. And then I can actually run the experiment. I've cheated a little bit because I know that when they insert the suspension, oxygen is going to be liberated and I know that the um, I know that the oxygen is going to form up here so I already knew to put this at the very top of the inverted test tube.
And then I can zoom in and I can see, oh, that went about, you know, how many centimeters? One and a little bit more. You could estimate about 1.5 centimeters. And then all of that can be graphed, put in the table and graphed as well down below. But Pivot has a tremendous amount of activities. They have put um, a great amount of effort into putting biology activities into Pivot. Um, I would highly encourage you to take a look at all of the activities that they've put in there recently, especially the ones related around osmosis. They've put in a whole bunch related to diffusion and, os and osmosis, which I think would be great for um, teaching right now. Other questions? No other questions. All right. Well, we could probably uh, end early if you don't have any more questions. I will make sure that I look into creating this activity as a video for you to take a look at. And um, we'll definitely take a look at that. So thank you so much for coming. I know that you're all very busy and I know that um, you know, th this probably took a, uh, some effort to get here and watch this and I really appreciate you being here. So thank you very much.